All right, so we're starting out a new project and we're gonna be using all the scrap cutoffs that I've accumulated over the last four or five years. I've been collecting all the little cutoffs and ends from my various projects. I have boxes of squared ends from when I'm trimming the pieces square. Lots of cutoffs, squared ends, pieces that didn't make the cut, lots of this type stuff. And we're gonna build some slabs out of it with a silicone mold, epoxy. What I wanna do is orient it in a mold I have and make a bunch of slabs. And then we're gonna join all those slabs together and use them as a desktop for today's sponsor, which is Fazebo. And Fazebo sent this over, and this is a standing desk frame. These basically elevate themselves. You'd be at your desk job, say your, your back is aching really badly, or you're just straining too much, you need to stand up, you need to take a break every once in a while. You can press a button and the desk will elevate to a certain height, whatever that is. I'm not sure exactly how tall this one goes, but we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna get this unboxed later on in the video. First thing first, we're gonna build a bunch of slabs. But yeah, today's sponsor is Fazebo. This is a pro two stage frame. For now, we're gonna go through all of our scrap and start building slabs. First thing we have to do is get this silicone mold unboxed and see what we're working with. I bought this from Amazon. That's our mold. And then this is supposed to be like a little frame that goes together and holds it on the outside. It's supposed to hold it from billowing outward, I guess. So let's try this, let's go like this. I might actually want to make my own straighter frame, and I think I'll make it out of melamine. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll make I'll make a frame out of melamine that fits perfect that fits this thing perfectly. Because this is chintzy. So we'll use some clamps to kind of hold the sides up, but this box will be a lot stiffer than that little flimsy little eighth inch balsa wood. Looks like it was burned with a laser. Um, laser cut balsa ply or whatever it is. I'm not sure. That was not gonna work. We're gonna spill everything out and start organizing it now. I'm talking and you hear a big whirring in the background. I don't use a Bluetooth microphone or anything. I'm just using the mic on the camera. So you're probably hearing this fan. It's 90 degrees in Michigan right now, and I have to have that fan on because if I start making dust, I have to use that fan to extract dust in the outside anyways, and then when that happens, it pulls in all the heat from the outside. So then I just basically have to keep it running because it's really hot in here, and if I don't have a breeze, then I sweat to death.
clamped a little cleat on there and then put that down to the table and just screwed a little piece into the table so it just comes apart really easily when I want to be done with it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this in as much as I can and then I'm gonna go through and any little holes, crevices, I'm gonna jam as much little sticks and things in there as I can from this stuff. I have two more boxes I'm gonna have to dump on here. I'm gonna cut up some driftwood, some more of that driftwood. Um, there's gonna be a lot going on. I'm gonna do six of these slabs, so we're gonna get at it. Just give the, the box a shake and you can kind of see loose parts and then just kind of packing pieces in around them. I'm really hoping that the epoxy just kind of finds its way through all the, the cracks and crevices and, and just kind of does the magic for me here. All right, I think this should be good. Let's see where we're at there. All right, just a little bit of that. Well, I sure hope it found its way into all those voids. There are a lot of voids in there. All right. Well, we gotta wait 24 hours for that to cure now. I don't really like working with epoxy, but I did do a test run with some uh, overpour that I had mixed, and I did it in just a little, like, Craig screw container, and I just jammed a bunch of my wood in there, and then I poured a bunch of uh, excess epoxy that I had from a project I was doing for my girlfriend's 30th birthday I made her a box and I filled in some some voids with this blue epoxy and I made way too much I only needed like a little tiny bit and I made a ton but I've been thinking about this idea for a long time and I wanted to try it and maybe we'll cut this down while that one dries and send it through the planer and see if it chips because if it doesn't chip then I can do the same thing to that thing and if that's the case then we're good to go and I can stop worrying about how the heck I'm going to get all these things cut off here and then plane down if I'm going to have I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't I really don't. It's and I don't I don't really like working with epoxy so I don't watch a lot of uh people that do work with epoxy. Most of the people that actually do work with epoxy are typically getting gigantic expensive slabs of wood from a tree that probably should have never been cut down. You have no way of getting that. You have no way of purchasing. I mean maybe you do. I don't know what your uh what your profession is, but if, if you're anything like me, you're not going to spend $20,000 on a slab of wood and try to find some rich associate or a friend that's going to buy it from you after putting, you know, after squaring it up and putting epoxy on it. This is a lot different to me. I mean, yes, I'm epoxy working, but I also am woodworking. I'm, I'm using a lot of the ends and of the scrap, the garbage from other projects that I've done. The wood that I built those projects from was garbage to begin with. I got that off the street. I pulled it off of furniture that was being thrown away, or pallets sitting on the side of the road. So this is, and the wood that went into, into those pallets, which is mostly here, was throw away to begin with. So tree cycleception going on here, 10 layers deep of recycling, and we're gonna save all the pieces I cut off this thing, and then we're gonna grind them up into a fairy dust, and we're gonna bathe in it, because that's gonna make us even more righteous. Um, after I finished pouring epoxy into that slab last night, I went ahead and milled that block that I was talking about. And uh, yeah, I think it turned out pretty cool. This, I put some tongue oil on it, and then I let that dry and sprayed it with some uh, polyurethane. That's essentially what this is gonna kind of look like. I think the pieces I'm gonna be making are actually gonna be a little more complex than this because I packed that mold really tight. And uh, let's go take a look at it. And this is about 15 hours later. There's no real loose pieces. I'm not trying to jiggle stuff because I don't wanna break anything loose, but I think in about three days, we're gonna pull this out and see how it held up. And then we're just gonna let that sit while we work on the others. In the meantime, I have a ton of wood I need to break down I'm gonna try to get this um, 
desk down to an inch or an inch and a half. So I'm gonna be making a lot of these out of these. I'm gonna basically process all this. So, I was just cutting little two inch pieces so I don't have to end up with a situation like this again. Which, I'm gonna take care of this, but I really couldn't see how much I was pouring in there to begin with. And I have to get rid of a lot of stuff now. And this mold itself is four inches deep. So everything on the top has to get cut off and trimmed down. Anyway, so I was cutting all of this into two inch pieces. Well, what was this stuff? So you can see like this. This piece right here has a rough edge. It also has a clean edge. What that was, was a pallet board similar to this. You can see the depth is probably the same as well. It was half inch. So I had planed this board down to half inch. And then maybe I could get two boards out of it, or two or three that were this, which is one and an eighth. So maybe I got that and then I ripped another one out there and possibly a third. When I was left over with, with a strip of wood with a live edge. Well, I have a ton of those strips of wood with a live edge. There's another one, trimmed live edge. And that's very typical of a lot of my projects. So I clean everything down to, you know, this type of wood to layer everything together into the projects you've seen me do before. Half inch, three eighths, one quarter, sometimes bigger, but it's all the same thickness. So everything's thickened, thickness down to something that works with the other pieces so that I don't ever run into gaps and things that make things unsightly. So I, I end up with a lot of stuff. Anyways, we're gonna process all of this so that we can get it all down to sizes that are really easy to take down when I get to the point where I'm deciding on my slab thickness, which I think I'm gonna do inch and a half. That being said, I'm gonna keep Getting back to work, it's like 90 degrees in Michigan here, and uh, I have a lot to go through and process. We're gonna have to figure out a way to trim all that off and then plane it down to about an inch and a half. And it looks like we got a solid, where it, where it has settled. That looks like a pretty good inch there. So we might have to do some infill or we might just go to an inch, I'm not sure. We got some waviness on the bottom. It looks like a city block or something like a land, like a cityscape. Looking over this and it looks like where it settled we're at about an inch the whole way around where it settles.
chunk of that stuff just flew up and smacked me right in the eyeball. Hmm. Time for safety glasses. All right, so I went through and I used the electric chainsaw to cut the high points down so that we'll have at least a semi-even surface for the feed rollers to start grabbing on. I'm gonna have to help them hand feed them through a little bit until we get down to a level where it can feed itself. Uh, it's so hot out that the uh, camera keeps turning off. I had to stick it in the fridge for a little bit. We finished playing this one. It was really hard on the planer. With all that end grain and the epoxy, it's just, I had to take really, really small passes. And this was kind of expected that it's just gonna chip out on the end as the blade's rotating this way, you know? It's gonna wanna tear that end off. So I drew up some quick dimensions of what's gonna be going on here. Little boxes with the X's are the slabs that I've done. There's six of those. That means I need seven one inch pieces. One is gonna go on each end and then one is gonna go in between each of the slabs. On the outside, we're gonna do a one inch border as well. This needs to be six foot four. And I found this up against the wall. This is a, a piece I've been holding on to for a long time. I don't know where I got, I can't remember where I got this, but I reclaimed this. It's just a, it's a board, nice and thick. It's got some live edge, rot. We're gonna plane that down and we're gonna take what we need out of it. I think this board cleaned up pretty well. I think that'll look okay, that red oak. So our pieces that are gonna be in between need to be 24 inches long. So I'm gonna cut what I can out of our scrap that we ripped off of that Full slam. All right, 
right, so I've been laying out these slabs and I think I have it how I want it. I'm not gonna be able to, to uh, glue the whole thing together in one go. That might be a little too stressful to try anyway, so I'm gonna glue it together in probably these three parts and then these three parts into separate slabs. And then when those two are glued up, I'll come back and I'll lock them together and I'll also lock the sides on as well. All right, so we used our book learnings. We put down a sheet of plastic this time so we don't get glue all over the table. And we have to scrape off every time we do this. Now I can just kind of wrinkle the piece of plastic and the glue should just kind of flake off, hopefully. That's the plan. Basically what I've done is I've created a, a straight edge and I've got some marks on the wood already that I made at specific points. 20 inches away from my cut line over here and I'm going to attach this board to this desktop and use this straight edge as the guide against the side of the table saw. So that will give us a straight cut over here. Then we can take this off, flip it, and reference the newly cut edge to make a cut edge over there. And then we'll have a square table. And obviously I don't wanna drill this board onto the desktop and I can't clamp it because that would just get in the way of everything. So I'm adding the same spacers in that I used to help clamp this table together. I'm just gonna use them as attachment points now for the, the guide.
All right, so I went through and I mixed up little batches of the epoxy and the colors that correspond with the slabs and filled in any little gaps. The first one I did was really patchy, so I had to kind of flood it. Um, and then there was a couple other ones that just needed a little extra. The other three were pretty good. There's some little tiny deviations, but I filled them in with Starbond Thin and uh, Accelerator. Link in the description if you want to pick that up. That was good for filling in little gaps and spots that I wanted to be solid when I put the oil down. This entire thing is going to have to go through the drum sander. So yeah, we're going to have to let this sit for probably two days and let that epoxy completely cure. Then we'll be right back. Secret weapon right here. It's always something like this. Right at the end, right when you're about finished with the project, you're doing a round over and it chips it out. Brand new. I'm just going to apply a very thin coat of water across this whole thing and that'll lift the grain that's laying down right now. That'll give me a smoother surface as opposed to if I were just to put oil down, that would also lift the grain. That's going to do that anyways, but this is going to um, kind of reveal what the color is going to look like, but it's going to lift that grain that's just sitting there. I only want a little bit though. All right, we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna wipe it off and flip it over.
this is the Pro 2 stage frame from Fazebo. Let's get her open. All right, so we got our accessories, screws, bolts. It's like wire, cable ties, Allen key, power cord, data cable of some sort. All right, so this is everything we have in the Pro 2 stage frame kit. Legs, feet, I think these are the mounts that mount to the table. And then this is the, the bar that locks the two legs together. So yeah, we're just gonna set it up. It looks really, really straightforward. I mean, it's really easy. This little package is all the screws and they're all labeled right on the package. It's a really uh, easy way to have, keep everything organized. There wasn't any description in the instruction manual on how far away to put these from the edges or whatever, it just shows you installing it. So I just took my speed square, which bottoms out at seven inches anyways, and I squared each corner two seven inches, which then left me three inches from each side. So now we're square. It shows there's supposed to be like a little, like a sticky pad that you're supposed to stick the uh, power brick onto the table with. And that doesn't seem to be in this kit. I think it might have gone missing at some point or it might have fallen out in production. So we're going to do a more permanent solution to this. And we are going to star bond it right onto the metal frame right there. A couple dabs on there, right there and right there. I'm going to hit the... Uh, the frame with a bit of an activator, just like that. Put it in just like this. Clamp it on, just like this. And take the old activator. All right, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get with our uh, cable management here. Give you a quick tour of what's going on. All right, let's do a quick overview before we test this. So the first thing I wanted to remark on was the sturdiness of this frame is really rigid, but everything on this is super rigid. And I read in the manual that this table can, this frame can hold up to 220 pounds. I would actually imagine it could probably hold more. That might be the motor capacity. Um, so we've got our, our T legs or whatever you want to call them, our T post leg 
We have a motor in each, in the base of each of these. They run in tandem and they lead back to the controller here. Plug in one side here, one side there, and then the last plug in leads to your power brick right there. And then you, you get your standard cable. Plug that into the wall and then you're good to go. One thing that was included in this package is these little cable tied double sticky sided tape things, which was I thought was an awesome feature. It was a very small thing, but that made it really easy to tie things away and hide them. All right, my original plan was to replace this little station right here, my little CNC computer station, with this desk. But this is just too nice to be next to the CNC getting covered in dust and shavings and, and all the exposed to all the abuse of this wood shop. I think the finish is too nice and I really like the way this turned out. I want this to live in someone's office. So I think we're going to go set it up in an office right now to do some testing, take some pictures of it. All right, so we have the desk set up now and I want to go over the raising and lowering because we haven't tested this yet. It looks like we're going up to, I think this is in, I think that's in inches. So we got up to 46 and a half inches right there. And that just raised it right out of the shop. I'm six feet tall and this is perfect for getting out of your chair and not having your back destroyed sitting all day. This is the automatic control right here. Hold the button. It's nice and quiet. This table, again, can hold up to 220 pounds. We drop to as low as 27.9. And there you go, now you're raised. And this is the Pro 2 stage frame. So I'm really happy with the way that this top paired with this standing desk frame. And we're about a little over six feet in length here, enough to hold two separate laptops and probably an accoutrement of other things you can imagine. This desk frame actually extends with that bar to meet your needs. And I think it had about probably another six inches to go before um, this frame bar itself was going to uh, max out, but this worked out perfectly. And then if you had enough standing for the day, you can get back to sitting. If you would like to break, drop it down to your desired level. 